So welcome to this video where I get to model me a building that I'll be launching in Meta Quest 3. This is one of the self videos that I'm going to be recording for building this application. Over time I'll enhance the application. Uh, in order to model a building, I, I want to add in an add-on, Archimesh. If it's not in Blend already, you can select it from the, the add-on on the edit. So I'm going to add a room. It's on the room to get the door. And then with that, I'm going to have to do a few modifications. And this could include the height, um, the length, and possibly I'm going to look at whether this is long enough for me. Probably going to make a few changes. Uh, let me add a few more walls. So let's go with 10 walls. Uh, so later on, I'm going to modify these walls, change the orientation, change the length, and to model the entire building. Um, I'm going to just increase that a bit more 20 because uh, the, based on the complexity of what you want to model, you could put more, build, more walls. So I'm going to change the length of the first one to 10 and the length of the second to 20. Uh, in, the second, in the third one, I, I want to make a few modifications, angular orientation, so I'm going to click on advanced. And then next thing is to change the angle, I'm going to put in 180. And um, I think beyond that, I'm going to change the length to 10. Ten. And then um, let's look at this again go to the fourth wall and probably go with the length of 15 and um, at 15 I think I might need to rotate it so now we'll go with advanced and go with 90 yeah I think I need to change around to 70 all right 280 but then um, no I think I need to get it right. It's going to be minus 90. Yeah, that looks all right. And then for the other walls, I think I'll need to mo mo rotate them around so they can build the other sections of the building. Well, that might mean sort of uh, closing up the first room. I'm going to change that to 17, probably 18. And uh, having to look at it from the top, that seems to be not feasible. I think it would be great to look at it from the top, so I probably want to modify the width of the walls or the depth of the walls. So by going to the top, I could modify the thickness of the walls, get it to something that makes uh, sense to visualize from the top. Uh, one important notice is that if you don't give it any width, it will be difficult for, it to, for you to cut through the walls or the windows, which we're going to add in later. So I'm going to just give it a thickness of 0 0.03. And then we can see from the top. Now, when I go back to the fifth wall and try to increase the length, it's obvious from the top what's happening. And then when I click on advanced and I rotate, uh, change the rotation, I can see where it's rotating to, which seems to work for me. That's minus 180. And then perhaps I would, uh, I could reduce the length to like two, two meters and move on to wall six. Wall six will be at five meters. And then move on to wall seven at one meters. Uh, click on advance, change the angle, see if it rotates. So, probably to go with 180. I'm just going to modify the length four meters and uh, go with the next wall, wall eight. Uh, wondering if that will stay at four meters. Yeah, four meters is fine. And I could go around, probably increase the length a bit so I can create a larger room. 
just next to the first row. I'm moving on to wall nine, change the length to five. Wall 10, change the length to four. Next will be wall 11, which is to sort of rotate around 180. And we're just going to click on advanced and then angle 180 and modify the length to four. And then probably change the length back to three. And basically, this is what I'm going to really do on and on until I can complete the building. Now, at this point, I've already created the walls, modified the walls. Now, I can see that the walls seem to be quite too tight from the top. They might not look tight if you go down to the same level as the building, but it seems to be tight from the top. So I'm thinking probably the best thing is to push them out. So I have to look for the wall that I have to make changes to. That probably could be wall 12, right? So wall 12 seems to affect it. I'm just going to put in the length of 4. So I'm going to look for the other wall that sort of pushes them to the left on the x-axis. That seems to be the next wall, 13. If I try the wall 13, yeah. That seems to push it out a bit. And then I, I probably need to look for the wall that's will push everything down to the same level as the starting wall. I'll probably just move the last second to the last wall. So I can move the last wall on that line, and that will be wall 36. If I give it length of four, yeah, and it pushes it down in line with that, and then wall 37. Give it a length of three, and I can create that opening there, where which can serve as a door, doorway, sliding doorway into the building. And that way, I've sort of created an environment for a small architectural building that I can put into Metal Quest Three. So I'm just gonna like go up and see what I can, what it looks like with the floor, and go up to the Archimesh add-on buttons and click on floor and see how it looks looks nice so that's that gets so automatically adds the floors to the, to the wall so the next thing i could do is add the roof the ceiling i'll click the ceiling yeah that adds a cover as well and next thing i want to do is probably add the ground that the house will sit on Later on, you realize that the ground might not be necessary if you're going to place the building on a terrain in Unity. Because essentially, I'm going to deploy this into Unity. So now let's do a walk around. Shift tilde and tab into walk mode. When you press Shift tilde, puts you in the walk mode tab, puts you on gravity. And then get it to fall to the ground, and then you get to walk around the scene. Which is a good way to actually visualize first and what you've done. So let's you can walk around the building, have a look around, see what it looks like. Is it too tight, too roomy? It's up to you to decide what it looks like. I think it looks all right. So walk around, look around. See if any walls are too tight for anyone to walk through. Essentially, at the, at, the, at the end of this, we're going to sort of build more models, animations, and stuff into this. Create some sort of interaction between the player and the objects in the scene. I'm just going to look around, move the ground a bit towards the edge so that the building center is sort of centered. In the middle, and I'm um, thinking of probably increasing the height. Yep, that's not bad. Later on, uh, seems to be too much actually, uh, but might not really necessarily need to increase the height because I think it's at human level height, unless you have a tall building. The next thing I want to do is add windows in, and I'm going to click on windows, add the objects in. 
and then modify this, move it close to the exit. The opening in the building, resize it by clicking the empty and pressing S, and then try to get to the height of the building. When you get to the height of the building, then centralize it. And then once you get that exact height, next thing we'll do is reduce the width, move it close to the edge. And then at times what I just do is go into edit mode and just move it. One thing you can do actually is change the length of the window. Or what we could do is change the length of the wall itself. So I'm just going to move the length of the wall just to be quite accurate with the end of the glass window, sliding glass window, sliding glass door rather. But then I'm going to select the empty, which seems to be the period of the window. And so move it back and forth just to make sure it's in the right place. Position it properly. And essentially, I don't have to cut through the wall to get the windows standing in there. But to add more windows, I need to cut through the walls. So let's see what it looks like if we render this. I'll click on EV render. Yep, but it looks nice. It doesn't look uh, clear really, but I'm going to use the cycles render. So touching an environment map, uh, it's showing purple because there ain't no image attached, a texture attached. So I'm going to add. And this is what it looks like with the sunrise or the EXR image texture. So that's what it looks like pulled out into the front of the camera. What I'm going to do next is sort of add in windows. I'm going to select a section of the building and look at adding windows. Perhaps wrong. Let's go with panel windows. Uh, maybe not panel windows. Let's go with uh, real windows. It's smaller. You have to resize it. The resizing adjustment is changing the sizes on the panel on the other height to two. Using the MC, I can move it down. And you can change the width to 2.0 as well. Depth to, well, I think the depth should be fine. Changing the wind, wind, uh, wind frame, I'm not sure it's necessary. Thickness is fine, back is fine, front is fine. Blinds, do we need blinds? We could put blinds, yeah. But then we probably want to Add a second window. Maybe make a few changes to the VCAL outer frame rises, inner frame. That should be fine. And then we can click on auto holes. So when we select the entire building, when we click on auto holes, it, 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 plays, it makes cuts through the building. And now when we render using cycles, we get to see it through the window into the building. I get a feel of the kind of architecture you're building. So it's empty and it's dark as well. That means we'll need some light. So we're going to add a point light. 
but this is what it looks like from it from the top from the outside solid mode I'm gonna move the light to the top put the cursor where the light is and then add a use this UV sphere make sure the segment is 16 and then reduce the radius to 0 0.2 even lower and then tap into edit mode double click the middle edge vertex set of x uh, set of vertices Click on the vertex and control L and delete and unhide the one the vertices you've hidden before. And then control L to select all. Tap into object mode first. And then go into wireframe. Move it to the top where the light should be. You can move the light as well into that space. Close to the ceiling. And then select the half square. S shift Z and expand. Then go back into object mode, reduce S to reduce size. And hopefully that should serve as a light. Let's look at the transform we'll need to. Now, going to object mode, it looks a bit spread out, which is fine. We could add material so it can be transparent in, in the render scene. So I'm going to go into transmission. I'm doing the render. And it provides some sort of light cover, which is not exactly impressive, really. I'm just going to play with it values to see if I can get what I want. If I change the color to blue, see if it makes any difference. It seems to give it blue glow, some sort, but not as powerful as I want. So we're just going to check whether I have the. I think for me, for this at this stage, I think I'm fine. I'm just going to rotate the light around to look at the cube. So if I can get some shadows, you get it from the outside. The, sh the shine, the shine of the, the reflection of the light from outside hits the cube. It looks nice. Probably take a while to render fully. So we will probably stop here and then in the next video we'll pop this into a Unity application and in the third video we'll probably run this within MetaQuest 3 so we can walk around. Alright, thanks a lot. See you then. Cheers.